Welcome to episode 98 of Explode Your Expert Biz Show, brought to you by gtex.org.uk. I'm your host, Simone Vincenzi, the expert strategist, and this is the podcast for experts who want to grow their businesses by becoming the authority in their niche while making an impact in the world. Uh, this week, I have the pleasure to interview Maria Franzoni on uh, how to get into speaker bureaus. And Maria is the founder and director of of um, MFL Speaker Bureau. She's Operation Director of uh, We Do Things Differently, Cultural Change Agency, a founding member of uh, the EASB, which is the European Association of Speaker Bureaus, and a part of the Global London Speaker Bureau Network. She has 20 years of experience in the speaking industry. So, um, she knows what she's talking about, and you will hear it from the interview. In fact, we talk about what speaker bureaus are really looking for, uh, how to get your profile bureau ready, and the most important things to do when approaching a speaker bureau to make sure you get booked. You will can uh, read the interview transcript and get bonus resources to at gtex.org.uk forward slash episode iPhone 98. There are also the links here in the show notes and in the blog post to connect with the Maria Franzoni as well. And uh, also, if you want to make six-figure presentation and become awesome at selling from the stage, uh, why don't you download our Selling from the Stage Ultimate Checklist, which is the ultimate checklist that will help you to create presentation that sells, but without using sleazy or manipulative techniques. And also, if you feel that this journey is a bit lonely, you know, you're spending a lot of time by yourself, you don't have a proper team, that's how the expert industry most of the time works, then why don't you connect with experts from all over the world and connect with our speakers and guests that we have on our show on our Facebook group, Explode Your Expert Biz. So, is Explode Your Expert Biz on Facebook. Last thing, if you want to reach out to me and send me an email, you can find my email here, which is simone at gtex.org.uk. And uh, I'll be taking your questions. And also, uh, make sure that uh, also if you need to, if you want to be featured in the show, let me know. And if you're running a successful expert business, then uh, we will love to interview and hear your story. Now, without further ado, it's time to hear it from Maria Franzoni. And let's start the music. Hello and uh, welcome to another episode of Explode Your Expert Biz Show. I'm here with the one and the only Maria Franzoni. How are you doing, Maria? Do you know, Simona, it's so wonderful to talk to somebody who can pronounce my name. <laughs> like That's what happened when we are Italian, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I really get all sorts. And uh, my first name is Maria Luisa, but I don't use it because only you would be able to pronounce it properly. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, it would become like Maria Luisa Franzoni. That's <laughs> a friend soon, frenzy. And worse. <laughs> and worse. <laughs> but we are here today to talk, Maria, about uh, approaching speaking bureaus because uh, you run a speaking, a speaking bureau yourself. And um, uh, I'm sure that you have, uh, I mean, I remember from the conversation that we had last time, there are a lot of people that approach you in uh, interesting and fun ways. <laughs> and you have a lot to say about uh, how to get into speaking bureaus from the bureau's point of view, right? Yeah, sure. And, and actually, let me correct you. It's actually Speaker Bureau, speaker which is bureau. which is odd because it should be Speaker's Bureau. You can say Speaker's Bureau, or speak, but it's Speaker Bureau. It came from, it's an American term and which we've taken. And I suppose most people would think of us as an agent, except that an agent works differently to a bureau. A bureau has many, many more clients who are speakers than an agent right. might so we're going to talk about the difference between agent and bureau because uh, that's definitely uh, one of the things that I want to cover. But before we go into the meat uh, of uh, of the conversation uh, that we are going to have today, how about you don't tell us uh, a bit more about uh, how did you get started in this industry? How did you start your agency? Do you know what? It was an accident. It was completely by accident. So I'd worked in um, in business for some years and I'd worked as a management consultant. So um, I thought I knew it all and I knew all the answers. I wasn't phased by anything. And at that point, I wanted to change 
career. And I saw an advert that basically said, if you can negotiate at senior level and not be phased or intimidated. And I thought, well, that's me. I've sat opposite CEOs and told them that their businesses were useless, you know, and terrible. So I thought I can talk to anybody. <laughs> and so, of course, the, pe the people you're negotiating with are some of the very, very senior speakers who you were trying to convince to do a speaking event on your behalf, or some of the very senior clients who are coming to you asking for these big names. So I had no idea 20 years ago when I applied to work for a speaker bureau, what a speaker bureau was. And the more I heard about it, I thought, this is fantastic. This is just such a brilliant business to be in because I ended up working with my heroes. I ended up talking to, working and booking people that I had admired and the, their books that I'd read, things that I'd seen them do. And it's addictive. And that's why 20 years later, I'm still here. Right. Um, and being... Being a control freak, I had to start my own business. <laughs> of course, uh, like because <laughs> I'm sure that you've seen a lot of other things that could be improved in other bureaus, and you say I can do better. <laughs> and yeah. Then you started your own. <laughs> I did, but, but I do. I, yes, I like it done my way, and uh, yeah, my team will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of your bureau? My bureau is Maria Franzoni Limited, and we call ourselves MFL for short, in case somebody can't pronounce Maria Franzoni. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's MFL, MFL. You have a contingency plan, I like that. <laughs> My team can pronounce it, but clients often can't spell it, so we, we reduced it. Exactly. Maria, so tell us, I want to know about uh, the... What do you see, what are the misconceptions? Let's start from the misunderstanding or misconceptions that there are among speakers. Because I'm sure you talk to a lot of speakers and they mm. approach you. And they, I'm sure that some of them think something which maybe is not true. <laughs> well, yes, I, I suppose it also depends if a speaker knows what a bureau does and how a bureau works. But I suppose the biggest misconception is that somebody starting out who has not had any paid gigs with corporates can get taken on by a bureau and then have their career developed for them. That only really happens if you've gone and done something uh, crazy like Tim Peake, for example. So, you, you know, you're famous, everybody knows about you, you haven't gone out there speaking for money. But as soon as you, you land on, on earth again, yeah. yes, of course, I'll take you on, no problem. <laughs> You, you have to have a hot story, be hot, be really current for a bureau to take you on if you've not already been speaking and being paid to speak. So we get a lot of approaches from people who are like, I haven't started charging yet. And that's the, not the right level. It's too low for us. So that's one thing. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's also make a step back. Tell me a bit more about the difference between a bureau and an agent and what a bureau does. And then we talk about the other misconception. I think it's really important to, to tap into. And actually, it's a misconception itself. Uh, it's a misunderstanding. You know, the fact that people don't even know uh, what a bureau is and what a bureau does. So tell us a bit more about that. Okay. Well, so, I mean, I've never worked for an agency, but my understanding of an agency is that they would have a smaller group of clients um, who might be presenters, they might be speakers or, or, or of that nature, and they would do everything for them. So they would deal with their speaking, they would deal with their, their book publishing, or at least finding them a literary agent. They would deal with their TV, their press, their PR, sometimes even manage their finances. So an agent does an awful lot more. Um, in some cases, not all of those things. Some cases, it would be a manager who would do that. A bureau instead um, is basically um, an organization that recommends speakers to clients. So a client comes to us. And th in this case, I'm talking about a corporate right. client. Yeah. So a corporate client running an event or wanting to do a, a board meeting and wanting some insights from an expert or wanting to do a masterclass for an executive group, will approach a bureau and say, this is what we're trying to achieve. This is our objective. This is our budget. Who is hot currently? Who are the people you would recommend? And we sort of do a matchmaking service, if you like. Okay, so they approach you and they say, hey, which one, which speakers do you recommend? Who is hot at the moment? Who is relevant? So the, I think that says a lot because uh, if you are not relevant as a speaker and you are not hot at the moment, I'm sorry, but uh, probably a bureau cannot really help you <laughs> to get your career off the ground, right? 
Yeah, and normally what happens is that the, the people in the Bureau will go after the speakers. So we'll know where the gaps are in our roster. We'll know where perhaps we're missing uh, somebody in a certain price bracket or somebody covering a certain topic that clients are asking for. Because clients, a lot of the time, are ahead of you in what they're looking at and they're coming to you and yes. saying, these are the areas I need to work in. Then, of course, you have the other side where you have the really top experts in the world and then they're ahead of the clients and then you have to convince the clients actually you might want to be going in this direction. So it's quite interesting. You're being stretched all the time and learning yeah. all the time, uh, which is the bit I love. It's, and what are some of the other things that uh, you see speakers do that will never, never get them into a bureau? <laughs> Do you know what? The mistake I see time and time again, and I just don't get it because these people, a lot of these people are really very bright and they have great expertise. But what they don't do is they don't think about the audience. They don't think, who's going to buy me? Who's going to book me? So they'll talk about the fact that, you know, that they they have three kids, two dogs, and they have a, a wonderful lifestyle and, and they're chasing freedom and this, that and the other. But actually, I want to know what have you done in your career, in your life? What is it in your profile that's going to want me to come and get you? And what are you going to bring me? It's not about you. It's what, what do I get when I book you? So sometimes people don't write their profile with the end client in mind. Can you give an example of a profile who is written right? Uh, uh, if you, if, let's say you work with a lot of corporate clients, right? That they are the, the majority of your client. They are corporate. So if I have to write uh, my bio in a way that uh, actually allows me to get in, what are the elements that I need to put in there? Because of course, the fact that I have a wife maybe is not relevant. <laughs> it's <laughs> no. not. It's not. Um, it, It, it is unless you are talking about managing a great relationship with your wife while having a very successful <laughs> okay. career, and that's the topic. But yes. no, it's not. It's nice to have as, a, as a, a couple of lines, but I wouldn't lead with it because the important thing is, okay, Simone, what have you done that, and what have you achieved? What can I get by being – you do it You do it very well with your Explode Your um, Coaching business, which I think you've changed the name now, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, Explode Your Expert business. Right? We Sorry. Are still, we are still exploding. We are still exploding stuff here. Yeah, but I mean, you do it very well. You hone in on it. And I think it's really understanding, okay, what are the corporates? Where are they hurting? What are the things that they need help with? So uh, speak to them in their language. Speak to the corporate clients in their language. Speak to them about – You bring me in. This is what I can help you with. And if you haven't got a tangible business benefit, you are not right for the corporate market. And do you need to have a corporate background in order to speak to corporate to understand them better? No, Or you don't. Absolutely not. A lot of our most successful speakers actually come from adventure or sport. But what they do is they link their experience to the business world. Right. So it's about then using I'm relevant, I'm current, I can deliver value and I can link my stories or my success in particular because we are looking at something incredible, something that you have achieved that makes people wow. Say wow is not just, uh, oh, I had a job and I had a career and I had this and I had that and then you're just like everyone else. Uh, you need to have a level of uh, um, achievement, of strong achievement, in order to be considered by them. Okay, uh, what are other things that uh, you see that are missing from when a speaker is approaching you to say, okay, Maria, uh, I, I have, uh, I'm actually from a corporate background, I can, I have, this is my career, this is what I have achieved, I can be perfect fit for your bureau. What's missing? What, what could be missing? Uh, well, I, I need video. I really need mm. video because in this day and age, um, clients haven't got the time to come out and see you speak. And okay, I, I may well come out and see you speak before I take you on. I would prefer to do that. In all cases, that's not possible because you might be based in Australia. You might be based in America. I might not get to see you. So I need good video. I really need good video. That is absolutely important. And I also need good testimonials. And I'm talking about testimonials from See, good level companies or organizations, not, I don't, actually, I don't want to name anyone because I don't want to say yeah, that yeah, somebody yeah. isn't worth, but you know, not free speeches. You have to have been paid and you have to have a testimonial of a certain level, of a certain kind. And are you looking, when you mentioned video footage, are you talking about any kind of video footage? So I can just put a, my iPhone at the back of the room and that will do? Or are you expecting... A, like a high production quality show reel? 
Simone, it depends. If you want to get paid hundreds of pounds, you do your iPhone thing. If you want to do this properly and get thousands of pounds, what do you think? What do you think? Come on. I know, I know it's a rhetorical question, but, you know, I told the speakers every day, right? The, the 90% of our clients are speakers themselves. You know, 95% of our clients are speakers. And probably about 80% of them, when we have our initial consultation, they don't have any footage. They are say, I'm a speaker, and say, can I see you on stage? I don't have any footage. And not even from my bloody iPhone, put it in the back of the room. So I, I'm like, oh, come on. Are we, are we, are we allowed to swear this um, morning? Are we? Well, well, you, you go, you go. If, if, you feel, if you feel like it, I just put the explicit uh, under the episode. We, we, we are free to express ourselves. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're absolutely right. Um, if you're trying to sell yourself, if, if somebody's trying to buy a musician, they want to hear the music. If somebody's trying to buy a speaker, they want to see what their style is on stage. They want to hear how they speak. It's absolutely vital. So I, I don't like it when speakers come to me and they're not ready. They don't have a well-written profile. They don't have testimonials. They don't have video. And the other thing that I need is I need to know if your topic is leadership or team or personal motivation, I need to know how do you tackle it? What do, what are the results? You know, in a paragraph, tell me how you tackle it differently from everybody else. And how can you express this difference? Because I think that, uh, you know, aren't information all the same? I mean, if I'm talking about motivation, it is motivation, right? Well, it isn't because you're, where you're coming from is very different. Right. And so, you know, I can have, I've got a lot of motivators on my books, but we probably don't call them motivators and we sort of make them a little bit more niche. And you look at the messages that they can bring. So you really need to look at your messaging and say, well, how, why is my messaging different? What have I done? What do I do? What do I bring to the table that is different to somebody else? And if it isn't different to anybody else, then are there too many people out there doing the same? If there's mm. a few, that's fine because there's a market. And those few won't be able to do all the gigs because they can't be available for everything. But if everybody's doing the same thing, then you've got a problem. You do have to stand Absolutely. out. So it's all about standing out uh, with your footage, with your testimonials. Uh, let's talk about testimonials because now we are on a roll, right, Maria? We are on a roll <laughs> talking about all, all these things here. Uh, how do we get great testimonials? Because I've seen a lot of speakers that don't have uh, any testimonials at all. And I know that you have created a checklist. We're going to talk later about all the checklists that, that you have created for the speakers. But how, how do you create that? And how do you get it? How do you get testimonials? Well, you have to go out and speak, first of all, and then you need to ask your audience for a testimonial. So sometimes, for example, you may go and speak for free, for example, mm -hmm. as you're starting out. But in that audience, you may have some senior managers from different companies why don't you ask an individual to give you a testimonial and allow you to quote their role and their um, company? Why not? I haven't got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Ideally, the testimonial will come from somebody who has booked you and paid you. That is the ideal. But when you're starting out, you've got to start somewhere and you'll replace the various testimonials with the paid ones as you go on. So now you're taking the testimonial and then, then you're replacing. Absolutely. We all start where, where we are starting, right? Um, yeah. Now, I, uh, I know that there are, you mentioned last time during the, our, our conversation that there are, not all bureaus are created equal. <laughs> Right. No, no. And no. I think that's a, another huge misconception that you say, I'm just going for a speaker bureau, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Each, each bureau has their own market. Um, each bu I mean, we compete a lot. There's a huge, huge overlap, especially in the UK. I mean, there's a lot of bureaus in the in the UK. So if you're going to go for a bureau um, and you're going to approach them, I think you need to check them out and really see, does what this bureau say about the company and the organization and how they work, does that resonate with me? Are the kinds yes. of people that are on the books, are they my sort of level or are they so high that actually I shouldn't be there? Or are they so low that actually I shouldn't be there? Are they, you know, have I got my peers on this uh, bureau? Um, and then I think the other thing is, I, I'm, which I'm sure you're going to ask me, is to, is to be very careful how you approach. But certainly have a look at that roster. Is there a gap? 
you know, is there some, is there a space for you to go in or are there 20 other people doing the same thing? And, and look at the fees. Some of the bureaus actually quote fees. Yes. So there may be a gap because your fee is slightly lower than everybody else. And actually that's fine. Great. Because if there isn't a speaker in that fee range, what tends to happen with a bureau is you either have to convince those at a higher range to take a lower fee, which they don't like look doing when there's a, a restricted budget, or you need to have people to fill that gap. Absolutely. And I remember um, something very powerful that you said during our first conversation when we prepared for the, for this show. Yeah, it was really powerful. And what you said was that uh, a speaker bureau is uh, mainly already for speakers to, to manage demand for speakers. And I think I would love to tap into this uh, part. Because for me, it was a huge ah moment. I mean, a, a speaker bureau, I, I speak to sell. So I never approach corporate. It's not in my interest. It's not in my niche. And um, when you mention the fact that uh, speaker bureaus are to manage demand and less to get and make sure and expect all the bookings to come from it, then it was a huge aha moment. And actually, it made sense. Can you tap into, in, into that, please? So I suppose, um, I mean, I, I managing demand on the speaker side or on the client side? Well, also on, on the speaker side. Yeah. So on the speaker side, what tends to happen is that a, a speaker who will get accepted often comes to a bureau when they can't cope with the volume of work they have. So what they tend to do is they want somebody else to manage that for them. And usually they're trying to put their fee up. And that's difficult yes. for you to do it yourself. So it's a lot easier for me as a third party to ask for more um, and also for me to turn down stuff that I don't think is in your interest to do. So that, that's the managing demand on the speaker side. Um, on the client side, um, I suppose there's all sorts of ways you can, you can manage demand. I mean, sometimes, sometimes clients come to you and they don't really know what they want. Um, or let's put it another way. They think they know what they want, but they don't know what they need. Yeah. Or, or they have um, an idea that, they, everybody wants Richard Branson, for example. So you, you get approached by the whole world, I want Richard Branson. Not many people will get Richard Branson to speak at their conference because it won't be appropriate for him to do so. Hmm. And also, they won't really be able to satisfy the criteria that is appropriate for him to do so. So sometimes it, it, we're actually having to educate um, clients as well. So there is this process of education from the speaker side and from the client side. So you're educating everyone. Oh, <laughs> no, I know, I know. But, but, but let me be clear. There are, I sound like a politician. They all say that. Let me be clear. There are so many amazing clients out there that bureaus yeah. work with regularly who are just so on it. They, they know what they should be bringing to their client. And sometimes they stretch us because it's like, you know, that's really tough. How do I follow that particular speaker who did such a great job? And now we've got to follow it for you with somebody else. So yes. there's some very clever, very switched on clients who really stretch you, who really know the speakers out there. And it's like trying to think of something different and find somebody different for them. It's the hard work. Absolutely. So then uh, if you are different, if you're listening to this episode and uh, you are different and you have uh, your shit together let me say the word then <laughs> you can approach a bureau absolutely because that's a, a huge opportunity that you have for you but you need to be on the speaking circuit already you need to be already you need to have all your shit together that's this is the bottom line you don't need to be on the speaking circuit if you've done something outstanding right. yeah. like like as we gave the example of tim um so or if you if you've just come off being a ceo of great company you don't need to be on the circuit in that respect or you've you know you're an inventor or a designer if you've done something else you don't need to but if you are a speaker where you're competing a motivational speaker or a speaker who's been an adventurer or that kind of, where there's a lot of competition then you're better off being already being on that speaking circuit brilliant so i, I now we, we're going to a q a because uh, we have about 10 minutes left for this interview so we have a few people in our on on our social media that asks us question from the group uh, explode your expert biz and if you haven't joined the group explode your expert biz when you can also ask a more question to maria and connect with all the other speakers that we have interviewed on our show make sure that you do it right now uh, we have a question from uh, angela de souza and she asks, where do I start? I would like decently paid speaking gigs. Now, I, I answered the question. I answered to her. I said, thanks for the question. Can you please me give more information 
about yourself because everyone has a different starting point. <laughs> like, where do I start? I don't know where you are. I don't, <laughs> where do you start? So she said she has been speaking for about 15 years and she can do training, conferences and talks. And uh, if you go on her, on, her, um, on her website, I went on her website, it says motivational entrepreneur. Super. So what, what is her entrepreneurial experience? And that doesn't say that. <laughs> right, okay. So that, so that might be a starting point. I, I mean, I, it's very difficult because you, you have to probably look at each case in point. But, y- yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and also for 15 years that she's been speaking, I hope, I hope uh, she has been charging in that time. I imagine she must have been charging. Do we know? I don't know. I know that she had the interviews, she had some interviews, but there is no footage on her on her website, unfortunately. Okay, so that we've, we've covered two areas there. Profile, get it right. Videos, get it right. Are there testimonials for speeches? There are no testimonials for speeches. There is are just... There topics? Yeah, so I think just rewind this podcast and I think that, <laughs> that's where you want to go. I think too many people focus on... Um, uh, and it's important. You have to focus on your content. You have to focus on your presentation. But they don't focus on the business side. And yes. the business side is getting those other things. You're like That's why you're so good at what you do, because you absolutely focus on exploding the commercial side, if you like, of the business. Um, so yeah. it, Without the yeah. commercial side, the other one can, the other side can be amazing, but becomes the most hidden treasure. It's a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hobby. It's a hobby. Absolutely. It's a hub. Thank you very much. So we, we, we answered Angela. So get your stuff together because she has a lot of pieces of the puzzle together. I think it's just making them clear on the website. And also there is no mention of the fact that she works in corporate, that she does corporate speeches and she just talks about entrepreneurs and motivation. So if okay, this is a, a good question. You're talking about topics. Now, if I want to talk about entrepreneurship, is there a space in yes. the corporate market about entrepreneurship? Yeah, we call it intrapreneurship because you actually don't want everybody to leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's why, that's the question because I, yeah. I, if I want to talk about how great it is to start a business and yeah. the struggles and the journey and how to make it successful and suddenly everyone leaves my company, I don't want that bloody speaker anymore. <laughs> No, no. What, there are some amazing lessons from being an entrepreneur. So I think I'm, it was it Angela we were talking about. Yes. So I hope she does a, a sort of look at her topic and really focus on what can a corporate client get from this? What can people get? Because entrepreneurs are one, they're the most passionate about what they do and they work really hard. So why? What are those things? How can that be applied in, in the corporate world? One of the biggest problems in the corporate world is engagement. And yes. part of the engagement issue is that people aren't passionate about their work. So there are things you can learn from allowing a more entrepreneurial spirit or intrapreneurial spirit, if you like, within an organization. Um, so that she actually, there's a, definitely a space for Angela. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And now we have another question from uh, Caldeja. Caldeja, uh, hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, she asks, uh, who should the request initially be addressed to? I think well, see, uh, to get into a bureau. Really, really good question. I hate it when I get, dear sir, madam, hi there. I don't actually, I actually want to delete those. And I've got one of my team is really kind and generous, not like me. And she will <laughs> respond to every single email. But of course, that email, because it's had the hi there and the dear sir, madam, won't get my attention. And at yes. the end of the day, I'm the one in my business that makes that decision. So... It's really easy to find out who to go to because most bureaus put on their website all of the people that are working there. And it's very simple to pick up the phone and say, oh, can I speak to so-and-so? Because they're listed anyway. Listen, could you do me a favor? I want to apply. Are you taking applications at the moment? Because you, then bureaus aren't always taking applications. That's a very good point. Okay, thank you. Don't get your timing wrong because if you apply when they're not and you get ditched, you don't get a second chance. Um, so, uh, yeah, are you taking them? Who can I apply to? And how would you like me to apply? Brilliant. I like that. So you're asking the bureau because every bureau will have a different process. We look for different things in speakers. Of course, there are, there are standard procedures that everyone is looking for or standard like testimonials the videos your website the fact that you've already been paid to speak that's almost common to every bureau from what i'm understanding but everyone will look for different things so you want to understand about how do you want to be approached 
So I'm looking for this. How do you want me to apply? Are you taking applications right now? What's the best way to apply? What do you need from me? Because then I can put all the things together and make sure that both of us not don't waste any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for me, the thing I absolutely hate is the dear sir, dear madam, hi there. And then the email goes on and I'm making a gesture because people can't see us <laughs> and I'm stretching my arms out and the email goes on and on and on. I haven't got time. You need to make it as brief as possible and attach a different additional information. Don't give me your life story in your email because I won't read it. <laughs> just give me tell give me what i need that's it yeah yeah and if you really want to get a bureau attention i would say listen i've looked at your website mr bureau owner whoever it happens to be you're writing to and i see that i would fit really well here and you've got this gap and this is what i can do for your clients and i'm you know this is why i think we should be talking etc 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 so that you've done your research so i know that you've really checked out my bureau and you're not applying to 20 other bureaus you might be yeah but don't show me that you are exactly because at the end of the day you the different bureaus on the same niche they are in competition so yeah. if they see that uh, you are applying to everyone then it's like why should i get you while you actually don't care about me uh, <laughs> is that it can a speaker be featured in multiple bureaus Yes, absolutely. And it happens a lot. And that's because, um, so as I said to you before, a bureau will react to a client yes. rather than taking a speaker and promoting them solely. There are exceptions where some bureaus have a handful of exclusives. Some of them have more than a handful of exclusives and they will actually go out and exclusives means only they look after that speaker and they will go out and promote them. It doesn't mean that another bureau can't book them it just means that they can't advertise them as belonging to them right. they belong to the other bureau yeah um so what happens is that there will be speakers that come to you who want to do a certain number of bookings and i know how many bookings i can get for a speaker a year after i've taken them on and and i see their profile i know what my clients will book and if i can only get you five or six gigs a year and you're looking for 40 it's not fair for me to take you on exclusively then i'm prepared to share you Right. And I will allow there are also speakers who are big enough and famous enough who will not sign exclusives and will be very happy to work with everybody. Now, when you've got to that certain level, you don't need to be exclusive with anybody uh, unless that person is really, you, you know, yeah. giving you a great service and you have they probably built you up over the years from pretty so, good. So you are doing it. You are doing it to as a thank you more than anything else to keep the relationship going and to say I owe you my career. So. Uh, I want to be linked to or, you. Or they've found they've worked with other bureaus and they love working with you the best. Yes, you can't yes. Them because there will be certain people, it's all about relationships, and um, there will be certain people that get on with certain speakers better because they understand their content, they understand how they work, they look after them better than anybody else. And of course it makes sense. You, you, you work with the people you like at the end of the day. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I have a few more questions. Uh, well, one is... Uh, uh, well, it's not a question, it's a comment from my wife, which says hi. <laughs> so Lovelda says hi. Hello, ciao <laughs> then, bella. <laughs> then we have Caroline, which says, which ask, which is asking, Caroline King, how do you seek out new talent? Hmm. I think I think we've more or less covered it, but really um it, I'm led by topics that are out there that are yes. coming up, and I'm led by cl what clients are asking me for. So and then we go out and do some research. I also Brilliant. am very influenced by clients because clients will come to me and they may have seen somebody at another event. And they'll often come to me and say, listen, I've seen this speaker at this event and I really think you ought to take them on your books. That for me is the best recommendation when it comes from a client, not from a speaker. So I, a client telling me this person's really good. And that's happened to me very recently. I took on a speaker last week because a client said to me, have a look at this guy. And I did. And I loved him. So that's, that's how yeah. it happens for me. Perfect. Thank you. Then we have a well, last question, which is, uh, we already answered it from Carla, Carla Trigo, which is asking, which criteria and key points uh, do, do you look for to hire a speaker? We already covered that. And uh, how do you do you actually get booked uh, to speak? So then in this case is is the same now a lot of uh, uh, some of our listeners are starting out at the yeah. beginning yes 
and they want to get themselves a bureau ready for like three or four years to come. Okay. Or even faster because you're going to help them fast. explode. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you suggest to them? What, what would you say to them? Someone is starting out from scratch right now. Well, I think what I would do is look at the people that you would aspire to be like and what they're doing and try to model their, their model, if you like. Um, it's actually not rocket science. It's, it's the more you get yourself out there, the more you get your name known. You need to be recognized as an expert and you need to be sure of your messaging and what you're bringing. Too many speakers spread themselves really thin and say that they can cover so many different topics. For me, that makes it impossible for me to sell you because I don't know where you fit. You need to know where you fit. You need to know who your audience is. You know who the clients are that are going to benefit from you. You know what you do. And, and when you're starting out, that's really hard to really know yourself because you, you, want to, you don't want to miss out any. You have FOMO, don't you? Fear of missing out. I have that a lot, by the way. And so you want to be there for everybody. Don't Absolutely. do that. Don't do that. Focus on what makes you you. What is your USP? Your USP is you as a person and your whole back history and experience and what you've taken from it. There is no other person like you at all. And then build on that. And this is, uh, funny enough, the first thing that we teach them when they join our courses, when uh, they come to our Facebook group, because uh, the journey from expert to authority and is being clear on what your expertise is about. <laughs> That's the very first step. If you're not clear yourself about what's your expertise, where do you want to be known for in the market, then you will not even know if a speaking bureau is the right path for you or not. Because yeah. you don't know, you're not sure about your market, you're not sure about who to approach, who are your clients, who are not your clients. So do your make sure you spend time in finding out and refining where is your place in the market, what is your expertise, where are you going. And uh, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, join the Facebook group because we'll give you a lot of free training on it. And uh, Maria is there to answer also other questions. Um, see Maria in other Facebook groups like the Speaker's Corner. She's always incredibly helpful uh, oh. with, with everyone. Um, now, I absolutely love this interview, Maria. Um, I almost got to the times up. I, I, <laughs> I have a lot of other questions to ask. So we might actually have a part two to this interview. Let's uh, maybe, maybe it's going to be a part two. But uh, how can people reach out to you? Because I, I know that you have created a lot of resources for speakers to get them bureau ready. Yeah, sure. Um, we're going to send out a link, aren't yes. we, to this podcast where people can download a document to help them uh, advise them about bureaus. I suspect a lot of people aren't quite there yet, but at least if you know what you need to get to, you can be striving in that direction so you, you know where you're going. Um, so you can get, you can find me on Facebook. I'm very happy for you to contact me. And you can contact me actually your, via your group would probably be the best way. Just ping me, tag me. I'll, I'll notice and I'll, and I will appear. <laughs> like a genie out of a bottle. Um, <laughs> but actually, I wanted to, before, I know we've come to an end, but I just wanted okay. to say one more thing. Okay. I think too many people get obsessed with getting on a speaker bureau's books it, instead of focusing on building their speaking business. Yeah. And what I would say is focus on building your speaking business and the bureau will come. The bureau is the icing on the cake. It's not what you start with. What... Uh what a beautiful way to finish this podcast. I think this is what wraps up the whole, the whole mess. This is what is, uh, is the wrapping of, uh, of this gift that you have delivered today, Maria. Thank you very much for being a wonderful guest on our show. And guys, make sure that you get in touch. If you are bureau ready, and they check out uh, Maria's bureau, so then uh, you, can, uh, you can get in touch with her. If you are not bureaus ready here, make sure that you download the resources. The links are here in the show notes and as well on our website that you can find in the blog post that we have written about this interview. And uh, get yourself bureau ready if that's where you want to go. And if you are not sure about your expertise yet, back to ground zero because you need to build up your expertise. You need to build up your business so then this the bureau can follow. Maria, thank you very much again. 
Thank you. Pleasure. Grazie mille. <laughs> Grazie a te. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to wrap up the interview. It's finished. It's the end. If you haven't subscribed yet to our podcast, then make sure that you subscribe right now. Click that juicy subscribe button. Yep. Exactly that one. And also send us a, a review, a five star, because of course we deserve five star. We are that great. And the content that we deliver for you is always top notch. And let us know what kind of, uh, what did you love the most about uh, Maria's uh, interview? Uh, because uh, th- there were a lot of golden nuggets here. Guys, thank you very much from Simone Vincenzi and the Explode Your Expert Biz show is everything. And I'll catch you next week. Ciao.